All right, so in our last example, we saw how to load some text and get points from it using an image, which totally works. It's all P5.js stuff. It's pretty easy. Um, I did promise you a mathier way of doing the same thing, so I'm going to show you that here. Um, we're going to get real deep on how this is working, so if you want to just skip ahead and check it out, um, you can do that. And in fact, you don't really need to understand what is happening here to be able to use it in your code, um, but we'll dig in a little bit in case you're interested. Um, so I've gone ahead and kind of set this up here for myself. Um, one thing, uh, so I did a lot of research to figure this out, and there is a built-in, oops, I meant to be here. Um, there is a built-in text to points function in P5.js, um, and it works. It's got a lot of settings that we can change, which is cool, but it has one major downside, and that is that it returns to you just a list of all the points in the whole string of text. It does not separate it by letters, which means um, you can't know which points belong to which letter, and that may or may not be a problem for you. But to me, it looks like, okay, I think we can do a little better. One of the really cool things about working with an open source project like P5.js is that we have access to the source code. So we can, this is for the font part of P5.js, um, and we can read it all, we can understand it, we can copy paste it, we can use it and modify it to fit our needs, which I think is really cool. Um, so I set out kind of doing some research and um, found this really great library called opentype.js, and it gave me, um, I spent a lot of time reading, understanding how these fonts are stored, um, and this really helped me kind of understand it. Ended up not using opentype for this, um, but it does include this really cool demo. Um, I don't know exactly how this is working, um, but you've got a text here and you can change these sliders and it freaks out these letters in really cool ways. Like I said, really don't know what's happening here, um, but it's kind of awesome and it hopefully it gives you an idea of some of the things you might be able to do. Um, okay, so I've got my uh, project set up here um, and I am I do have one additional file that you're gonna need for this and that's this text to shapes.js. Um, that's the code that I've written to allow you to do this. And essentially it's a modified version of the P5.js text to points command. Um, so you just need to copy that into your um, sketch folder, and then we need to add it to our uh, sketch e in the HTML. So you want to do this before sketch.js because things are um, uh, loaded in, or in order, and we need to have access to this command before we use it. Um, and we'll go into the details of some of how this all works here. Okay, so I've got my font loaded, all that stuff. I think we're ready to get started. Um, the first thing I want to do then is create a variable called letters. And this is going to be what I'm going to get back from the function. Um, and it's going to be all my shapes. Now the command is really simple. It's letters equals text to shapes. And we send in the font that we want to use. We send in the text we want to use. And um, I can't remember the keyboard shortcut for some of these special characters. So I'm going to paste an angstrom here, a unit of measure. Um, and then the last thing it needs is some options. Um, and so I'm going to define that as a variable here. And um, this variable is in kind of a, a different form than we've talked about before. Um, it's called a dictionary or an object in JavaScript. And essentially it's um, a variable that can hold lots of different variables and they can be different types. So you can have strings and numbers all in the same or images all in the same object. Um, and they take the form, um, each part inside this um, object, takes the form of a name, colon, and then the value. So we can give a variable a name and a value, and we've actually used this already. So when we load an image and we get its width, we do image.width, and it gives us that result. That's you calling the name width of that object, and it's returning you the value. So in this case, we need um, an X position for our text. It defaults to zero, zero, but we can maybe do it at 50. Uh, and you notice there's a comma in between all of these. The Y position we'll do at 250 and font size, let's do 144. Now there's defaults for all of these. Um, you may get some errors if you don't include some kind of options. Um, the defaults are X and Y at zero, zero. The font size will default to whatever current font size you have. 
Um, and then there's some additional options we can add later that we're gonna leave off for now. If you didn't wanna use any options, you could just do a blank object here, but I'm gonna pass in, uh, if I can spell it, pass in the word options. And then let's just do console.log letters and see what it gets back. Console.log is really, really great because it's gonna allow you to see steps along the way and see what kind of is happening. So I can see here, it's a little bigger for you. I can see here it gives me an array of eight things, which makes sense. There's eight letters in my uh, word here. Each one of these includes an array. Uh, so for each letter, in this case, Angstrom has four shapes in it. It's got the outline of the letter A, it's got the inside of the letter A, it's got the outline of the little dot on the top, I should know what that's called, um, and the outline of the hole in the middle of it. And so each one of those then um, contains an array of points, X and Y, and then some other stuff that comes along with it. Um, cool, so we actually don't need to know a ton about what's going on there, um, and but we will dig in a bit to the text to shapes command, and I'll show you a bit of how that's working. So then to use this in our draw, I've got my background here. Let's um, make this a little darker and bring this up. So we can go through all of our shapes. So we can go through the letters array. And for each letter, let's grab that list of shapes. So that's gonna be um, letters at index i. And then we can go through all the shapes and draw them. So for j equals zero, j is less than shapes dot length, j plus plus. Um, this would be a place where using a class might be really smart because it'll offload a lot of this stuff and make it cleaner in your code. But for now, let's just do it this way. And then we're gonna draw each shape. So I'm gonna say fill of semi-transparent white. Let's do a solid white stroke. And then we can use begin shape and end shape for this, which is cool. So then there's one more for loop um, for k equals zero, k is less than, oops, k is less than shapes dot um, shapes. Oops, I missed something. Yes, I did. I missed grabbing the shape. So then we're gonna go through each letter and grab its list of shapes. For, and we're gonna go through all the shapes and grab each shape and display it. Uh, so shape equals shapes, uh, oops, J, like that. So we've grabbed the shape here and now we're gonna do shape dot length. That's our points. I guess maybe we could call that points too. That might be a little easier. Um, and then our X is gonna be shape K dot X and y is gonna be the same. And then we could do a vertex at x and y. And fingers crossed, I don't think I missed anything. Let's see, we get the word angstrom, which is perfect, um, and it's displayed. So we can see a couple of things happening here, um, or hopefully you can see them. Maybe I can zoom that in a little bit. For one thing, um, I can see that the outline of my letters is a little jagged, and that's because it's approximating everything with line segments. So it's no longer these perfect curves. Um, letters in fonts are actually defined using straight line segments, but also very complex curves. And um, we're not rendering any of those. That would be something you could think about trying to do, but it would involve a lot of digging into how fonts are stored um, in the computer. The other thing you'll notice is that the insides of these letters are filled in, um, and they're actually very, bright white. And the reason is that you're actually seeing two shapes drawn on top of each other. The whole is being drawn as not a whole, but as a shape. And I spent a long time trying to figure this out for you to see if we couldn't understand, you know, if I couldn't extract what's a whole and what's the outside of a shape. And there's just really no good way to do it um, that I could come up with. I'm sure it's possible. Um, but for now, so that's one of the limitations. If you draw text with a fill, you're going to see that. If we were to do no stroke, or I'm sorry, no fill, and run it. Now you're gonna see it's gonna look kind of like what we would expect because there's no fill applied here. So that's one limitation that we might see. We can, however, um, improve perhaps the way these letters look. Depending on what you're doing, that resolution may be fine. 
um, but we can add two additional values to our options. Um, the first one is sample factor, and um, the default is 0.1. Sample factor is essentially the spacing between the points, and so as we change that number, it's going to change um, how many points that we get. And then the other one is simplify threshold, and the default for that is zero. Um, so imagine you have a straight line being drawn, maybe the side of the T here. Um, since those lines are all on the same line, they're all part of a straight line, we don't need a bunch of points there. Simplified threshold will remove points that are collinear, that are on the same line within a certain tolerance or threshold. So this number changes that. With zero, um, it's just gonna draw points everywhere. So let's see, um, if we run this, I don't think it should change. Yeah, that looks the same. Um, because these are the defaults. But if I bump up the sample factor, for example, to 0.5, now it's way smoother. And the reason is that we're seeing tons and tons of little points all the way around. Depending on what you're working on, this might be better or it might be worse. If you're trying to do a physics simulation with all these points, too many points is going to just slow your computer down, but won't make it look that much better. If we bring that back down and increase our sample thresh simplified threshold, to five degrees, well, maybe that's five in radians. I actually don't know. Um, you can see it totally glitches this out. Let's see if we make that one. Yeah, so again, you know, you could play creatively with these things. If we make the sample threshold super low too, you're gonna get these like really blocky kinds of things. Could be really fun. Let's find kind of a happy medium. I think we're gonna leave simplified threshold at zero. I like that point too. It's still a little, chunky, but it's got a lot more detail, which is looking good. Cool, so that's how we can get these points. And then it's really creatively how you wanna use them um, for stuff. So let's add something that I think will be kind of fun. Um, I want to have my cursor um, have kind of like a brush that's gonna manipulate these points. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is just add a visual cue for that. So I'm gonna say no fill, sort of a really transparent stroke and a circle at mouse X, mouse Y, and 100. So now I have this, hopefully you can see that. Let's make that a little brighter on the screen. I think it looks nice on my screen, but maybe it's hard to see on the video. That's a little better. Um, so any points that are within this circle, I wanna have manipulated by my, um, by my cursor and everything else will get ignored. So all I need to do up here, I've grabbed the X and the Y here, and I wanna be able to change them. So I wanna know if they're within this um, circle. And to do that, I can get the distance between X and Y and mouse X and mouse Y. Um, and that's the distance. And then I can just um, say, if the distance is less than the radius of that circle, I know it's inside the circle like this, and then um, I'm just gonna say, if it's inside there, x plus equals a small amount of randomness. And you could certainly do more fancy physics stuff with this that could be really rad, um, but I'm just gonna do this. And now my cursor's out here, but as it comes in, you can see it applies this wiggle effect to points that are inside there and not ones that are outside. So the text appears as normal and then gets all freaky and wiggly um, as my cursor moves. So I'm sure you could think of lots of other cool things to add to this um, as you're working. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the challenges I wrote here because I think there's some cool ones. Um, you could think about other ways of displaying these letters. So for example, instead of using begin shape and end shape, you could have um, dots or something like that. Um, yeah, for sure, we talked about doing this as object-oriented programming instead, and I think that makes a lot of sense. This like lists of lists of lists gets really crazy. So you could think about what would be the hierarchy and the ordering of this, and you might wanna do objects that contain other objects. So maybe you have a text object that contains letter objects, that contains shape objects um, that have a list of points in them. And it, that sounds crazy, but actually it makes it a lot easier to kind of organize it. Um, and, yeah, you could think about some really cool additional stuff like extra characters. Um, so the new line character, the one that means a line break, is um, looks like this, it's slash N. So you could um, have it do some cool stuff where you could actually have this go on multiple lines, stuff like that. Um, 
So that's um, what we're going to do here. Now we're going to take a, a dive for just a little bit into this text to shapes function. So if you just wanted to see how to use this, that's cool. Jump on to the next thing. Um, but we're going to dive in a little bit here and take a look. Um, so there's a lot going on here. And like I said, I've pulled a lot of this from the um, P5.js library. This is kind of the process I did to figure this out. I spent a lot of time reading and understanding the text to points code and then um, modified it to work for me. Um, so the first thing we have here, we have the name of the function and I'm, I have it in a different file because it's just gigantic, makes a lot of sense. Um, and I thought for a while about what the argument should be. In this case, um, I wanted to know what font we should use, the string to, um, to display, and then the options that we created before. Um, this here is a way of creating optional arguments. So um, in this case, it's saying if options.x exists, use that. Otherwise, use 0. Same for y. And then the font size, it should either be the, the one just, uh, specified in the options or use the one that's set by p5.js. And this font.parent.renderer.txt size, this took me a long time to figure out how to like connect to that in p5.js. Um, so I've done some of that work for you. From there, we go and get um, the glyphs. So glyphs are the letter form for a symbol in a font. Um, those might be the letter A or um, a special character on the keyboard or a space, all those kinds of things, anything that can be specified within the font. Um, there is a get glyphs function that's built in. So I use that and just sent in the string. Um, that's part of the font implementation from P5.js. And actually um, what you can do here and what I did a lot while working on this was just print stuff as you go and you can dig in and kind of understand um, what you're getting. So if I run this, I'm actually gonna make this, the console here real big. So um, I can see I get an uh, array again of glyphs. It's got eight elements because there's eight letters in my text. And then I can examine each one of these and see that a glyph contains a ton of different things. Um, it's got an index. It's got a left side bearing, which is a spacing thing, advanced width, which is the size um, of the letter in this weird unit that fonts use um, that tells you how far to go for the next letter. This is a whole rabbit hole I went down. It tells you what um, Unicode symbol it is. It tells you a bunch of other stuff. And then you can dig in further if you want to some of these things here. Um, so this is a glyph for every letter. From there then, I wanted to know whether there was this was a space. And this was built into um, the original text to paths uh, or text to points function. And so I just grabbed this. Um, it works really well. It's a number of different checks to see if a letter or a character, sorry, is a space. Um, because we don't want to add any points for a space, but we do want to move over by the width of that space. You can see where this starts to get really crazy. Then I create um, an array for our letters and the X position, because I want to know where each letter goes. The points for a letter are relative to 0, 0, but we need to know where it goes kind of in the string of text. So I go through my glyphs, I grab the glyph, I check to see if it's not a space. If it is a space, I just update the X position. We'll come back to that in a sec. If it's not a space, then I get its path. And um, there's another function that I grabbed from P5.js library, this um, get path and then split paths all was kind of built in, um, which just saved me a lot of trouble. Um, the path then contains, actually we can print this too. Let's do, oops. So we're going to see this for every letter, but that's OK. Um, let's see, hopefully. I think this is paths. Yep. And so it gives us our paths in this weird format. This format is what's used by SVG, uh, which is a common vector graphics format on the web. Um, and these are drawing commands. So M means to move our cursor or our position um, to a certain point. C is one kind of curve. Uh, Q is another. I think C is cubic and Q is quad or something. I can't remember. Um, so they specify curves for the letters. L is a straight line segment. And then Z we see at the end means it's the end of a shape. Um, so it's going to be 
what we then need to do is extract these commands and get them into like a useful format. So I'm going through all the paths. I'm then converting them to points. Again, this is a command I grabbed from before um, from P5JS. And then for each point, I'm adding its, um, remember it's relative to zero, zero. So I'm adding its X position in the overall line of text and then <laughs> pushing that point to the path, pushing that uh, path to the letter because the letter might contain more than one path if it's got a hole in it <laughs> and then pushing that letter to the overall list of letters. Ooh. So it's a lot of nesting, a lot going on. It took me a long time to kind of figure this out, get this working, uh, but here it is for you and you can check out the code for that. Then the last thing we need to do for each character, we need to update that X position and um, this calculates that. So it's the advanced width, which remember advanced width is like the size of the letter, but it's in this weird format. And um, then we need to convert that. So we convert it from the font size um, to pixel dimensions. And that happens down here in this function. And it took me a while too to kind of get this little guy working, but it seems to be working right now. Everything else here is stuff that I needed from the um, P5 font library. Um, and it's stuff that I just I needed locally. It needed to be able to know where to find it. Or I have a cat here who really wants to come up. Uh, maybe you saw him walking around back there. Um, so, you know, I don't know how all of this works. I really didn't read through this. I just grabbed everything I needed. Um, so if you're excited about that, feel free, go in. Um, you know, you could annotate this. You could really understand how something like this works if you're excited about it. And this is a good example of that. Like I dug in real deep to one tiny piece of P5JS so that I could modify it and do something cool, but I was able to ignore other things because I just didn't need to really understand them. And that's how it happens a lot with code. You know what you need to know, you can always dig deeper. Um, you know, it's just like endless cycle, which is pretty cool. Um, so hopefully that was interesting to you. Um, loading points from text, um, this is the hard way in a way because it's more complicated, though I think using this is actually pretty easy um, once you get your head around the multiple lists and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you might be able to put this to use to do some cool stuff in your projects.